You've tuned in to the Top 10 Garden Show with garden expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation daily as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Or visit face-to-face throughout the week where he can be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I started out the show mentioning that uh, things are waking up. Deliveries are all coming in in full glorious bloom. I mean, the roses are over the top. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. You walk in the upper greenhouse and it just, it's almost overwhelming. Butterflies are coming out. It's, it's beautiful. And so, and the natives are starting to grow. One native that's a little slower, but I think is, is underestimated, under, not appreciated nationally, but it's coming online very quickly. I mean, globally. And it's grown right here. It's called an, uh, an Arizona desert willow. And you'll see these growing just wild from Prescott going out over to Skull Valley, Baghdad, Hillside, all those taller deciduous trees or really large shrubs. Those are desert willows. Going out to Dewey down that 69 corridor, up over the hill to Jerome, down through the, the Verde uh, at Cottonwood, Camp Verde, all the way to Sedona. Those tall deciduous trees up to about 20 feet. Most of the time, they're multi-trunked. They're like a great big bush. Or, or sometimes they're trained to be an actual tree with a crown at the top. Those are desert willows. And so there's a couple varieties coming online. This is kind of exciting technology. Uh, the, 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 the number one breeder of desert willows lives in Tucson. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he and his family run a garden center and a growing operation down there. And they're big into Arizona plants and they're breeding these things. Here's the difference. So 10 years ago, we were selling desert willows, the native one that you see growing on the side of the road and they're beautiful pink. They've got willow shaped leaves. Animals leave them alone. Havoline don't eat them. They're drought hardy as can be. Butterflies love them. Hummingbirds are all over them. They have everything going for them except after they're done blooming, they form a bean pod. And when they form a bean, that's their thinking, oh, I'm going to stop blooming. I've, I've pollinated. I'm all set. I'm pregnant now. I'm just going to give birth to more, more desert willows out there. More beans. Focus on the beans. And they just throw off beans. They're trying to get more of them. So you'll see groves of desert willows in the wild. And this is how they do it. Well, the new breeding, what they're trying to do, and what they've succeeded. So uh, if you see the name, if you're at the nursery and it says desert willow, that's it. That's going to be our native one that grows wild. If they give it another name, so Timeless Beauty Desert Willow, Bubba, Bubba May, or some other name in front, Desert Willow, those are exclusive new introductions. They're the ones you want. Because what they've done is they bred out so they don't, they don't form the bean. So now the plant, when it gets done blooming, sheds a flower and it goes, oh, Oh, I didn't set any beans here. What's going on? I should probably bloom again. So this is pulsating waves of, of, of color, of flowers. Uh, so that keeps going from the end of May through autumn. It's just an amazing flower. It's got a, a kind of kind of an orchid-shaped flower, a kind of a deep throat flower to it, about the size of, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches long. And hummingbirds, that's why hummingbirds love it. It's a deep throat flower it's with lots of nectar. They're all over that thing, from monarchs to painted ladies to swallowtails. Uh, all the butterflies love them. All the hummingbirds use it as a, as a migration source going up and down, north and south. So they are, they are all the pollinator things, uh, animals out there, they love desert willow. But if I were planting one in my yard, again, plant it. Treat it with care, get it rooted out, get it up to size, and then you never have to water it again. It takes almost no uh, pruning, just keeps its shape. Keep, it just easily keeps its shape. No care, it's just a great little plant for you. It'll take full sun, I would say, at least, <coughs> I don't know, six hours. I go six or more. More uh, sun equals more flowers. <coughs> Excuse me, let me take a quick sip of. Mmm, coffee. Yeah, you know, my aller. I was out working in Chino Valley. Uh, the wind was ferocious out there earlier in the week, and I came the next day. My whole my my 
sinuses are just clogged up. I mean, something is out there blowing right at me as I'm killing some weeds or whatever. Going, oh my gosh, I should, I should, I'll wait. I'm not doing this when it's windy again. I'm going to wait spray in the morning. It'll be better. So insider tip, note to self, treat yourself better. <laughs> Don't go out there when it's that windy. It's like 40 mile an hour winds. It's crazy. So you, you folks in Chino Valley, those newer properties, it's really windy. Once you plant a few trees and they start to get up, that wind stays up above the roof level and becomes much, much more pleasant. We found that our first house in Prescott Valley, this is back in the 90s, we had dirt roads back then, believe it or not. We were all, all of Prescott Valley was on septic systems, believe it or not. And then they got, they moved into this era. And so they became a real city and they just boomed ever since. Very proud of them. Anyway, we were, we were out there, brand new house, new landscape, started planting. And it was just, the wind shears would hit and just, it sounded like a freight train. By the time we left several years later, the trees were growing up and you could hear the wind. You could hear this steamroller coming down. Then it would hit the top of the tree. You see the top of the tree whip around. And the wind would stay up there. Yes, it's breezy down here, but it wasn't that freight train running through the yard. So the trees are, are amazing at changing your environment, making it cooler, more pleasant, and keeping it kind of not as windy out there. Got more for you, but uh, let me take a quick break. Be right back after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, poppy, purple plum, and our white night candy tuft. Masses of fragrant white flowers cover mounds of perennial green foliage. Extreme heat and cold tolerance, this award winner repeatedly blooms without deadheading for super easy care. Butterflies, bees, hummingbirds are going to love your backyard again. White Night Candy Tuff can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Top 10 Gardener, your source for timely garden advice, seasonally correct for the garden. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. 